What's up, Toasties? Movie Toaster Adam here. It's the end of 2023. Um, we were supposed to have another episode of our movie review podcast, Movie Toast News and Reviews, coming out. Well, we were supposed to live stream it last night or tonight. Uh, get one last sin of 2023. And uh, yeah, that didn't happen. So I figured I'd come at you with a live stream and uh, give you my top 10 movies of 2023. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. 2023 was an interesting year of movies. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't shitty. It was middle of the line. I thought it was going to be hard coming up with the top 10 list. But I came up with about 13, widowed it down to about 10. So uh, with no further delay, let's get into it. All right, up first, and no specific order. These are all just my favorites of the year. Uh, and honestly, there might have been other movies I saw but forgot. And uh, yeah, so here we go. All right, movie one, Polite Society. This movie I had no interest in. I didn't really know much about it, but boy, oh boy, was it fantastic. It reminded me of an Edgar Wright movie, kind of on par with, I guess, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the way the action is, the way the comedy is, the way the edits are cut, the, the camera movements. Everything about this movie was so freaking kick-ass. All right. And had strong female leads. Uh, I believe it's a British movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you check out Polite Society. I believe it's exclusively streaming over on Peacock. But of course, you can rent it or buy it wherever you get your digital films. All right. So up next, I have a movie that is called A Good Person. I think this might be streaming over on MGM Plus right now or Amazon Prime, possibly. So Morgan Freeman uh, in Florence Pugh are giving a great performance in the Zaf Braff film. Uh, so initially Florence was engaged to, I want to say Morgan's son. And uh, unfortunately some people died because of an incident with her driving ruined her life. She became an alcoholic Morgan Freeman started griefing, grieving. He had to raise his granddaughter. It's a shit show life, but the two come together and find one another and kind of find harmony and peace with one another and the situation. And it's just a powerful film. They're giving great performances. Um, I highly suggest it. I teared up a few times. Uh, a good person is a very good film up next. I have Blackberry. This movie, I was already kind of intrigued by the cast. Glenn Howardin and Jay Barshell. It's a biopic about the creation of BlackBerry phones and the meteoric rise and then the imminent demise of the BlackBerry. This was a very fucking gripping story. I knew nothing about it. And the acting was great. And it felt like an old 90s style film in all the best ways. And I believe right now, you can catch it as a mini series with more footage, more story all over on AMC or AMC plus. Uh, I'm probably going to check it out because I've only seen the movie and I guess there's more footage. And this movie is so fucking awesome. I uh, highly suggest you check it out if you haven't seen it already. Up next, I have no more bets. I knew nothing about this movie. I thought maybe it was a betting movie. Maybe it was about poker or blackjack or something. Kind of, but not really. This is about something that actually happens in real life, and it's tragic and fucked up. All right, so it's about how people get kidnapped, and they're forced to essentially work in online and phone scams to rip people off. And the better they do, the better they're treated. But they can't escape. And it's about these two people that meet. Well, there's a few people that meet, but essentially this couple that comes together in this kind of, I guess I want to say kidnapped situation and how they want to try to escape and uh, do better with their lives. There's a lot of good character development in this movie and it's so freaking riveting and like scary to imagine that this stuff, this I believe is based on a true story. Uh, now I will say it's a Chinese movie, so you're going to have to read subtitles if you don't know Chinese, but it's well worth it. I was so happy. I saw this movie, especially not knowing anything about it. It could have sucked, but it was great. Up next, I have the Super Mario Brothers movie. 
All right, I was looking forward to this. I wasn't sure what to expect. Was Chris Pratt the best choice to voice Mario? Maybe not, but he did okay, I suppose. I mean, without this movie, we never would have gotten Bowser singing Peaches. What a fucking great song. And uh, Charlie Day as Luigi? Come on, a no-brainer. And Anna Taylor-Joy as Peach? Great. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong? Pretty good. Keegan-Michael Key as Toad? Voice has kind of changed, but still pretty good. Overall, very good, especially for a video game movie. Normally, they're not that good, but this one, pretty good. I think by this point, most people have seen it. Uh, I believe it's on Peacock, but it's also over on Netflix, I believe, and available to buy wherever. All right, up next, I have The Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbyes. This is an anime movie about two kind of outcasts that come together. They discover this tunnel where their wildest dreams can come to life, but they just got to figure out how to get it to work. And they start bonding. This is a beautiful anime film, all right? Uh, the artwork work is stunning. The uh, voiceover work, I don't know. I, I think I saw this dubbed, so I can't say about the voiceover work. But overall, really good, really tight, really compact, and just visually pleasing, especially when they're in this tunnel. It looks so great. All right, up next, Sizu. This is a Finnish movie. Uh, it's about this uh, older prospector. He just got gold. He's set for life. However, some Nazis come and try to fuck with him. <laughs> and at first, they kind of succeed. They leave him for dead. They take his gold. But he is not dead. He's seeking revenge. This becomes a bloody fucking Nazi killing flourish of a film. This movie was amazing. It's like early Tarantino movies in another language. And it's so bloody. It's gritty. Oh my God, this movie is great. I think it's over on stars. Maybe if you get stars, check it out or rent it or buy it because this movie is also, I think based on a true story or roughly based on a true story, but it's action packed. It's so fucking good. Check it out. All right. Up next movie. Number eight, Thanksgiving. Now, did this live up to the Grindhouse trailer? No, of course not. It's hard to do. Uh, but it was a fresh, interesting spin. And honestly, out of all the horror movies I've seen on in the past year, in 2023, this one's pretty sharp. It goes for some gore. This reminds me of Eli Roth at his prime doing movies like Hostel. And it did not let down. And I'm happy to see that it did really good in the box office. It's getting a sequel. I don't know if it needs a sequel because it was pretty fucking good the way it was. And honestly, this was a nice kind of Christmas Thanksgiving horror movie. We don't have too many Thanksgiving horror movies. So this really itches that need. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it. I uh, think it's on VOD now. I don't know where I think you got to pay for it, but it's definitely worth seeing if you haven't seen yet. Movie number nine, Saltburn. All right. This movie visually on the big screen was pleasing. It looked so rich, so vibrant. The acting was good. Uh, the story was kind of chilling. Now, I know some people say it has no substance. I think it had some substance. It had some pretty fucked up scenes, for me at least. I know some people don't think it's super fucked up, but there's some really crazy stuff and some mind-bending stuff. Barry Keegan, I might be saying his name wrong. I probably am. Uh, normally not a giant fan, but he was really good as this lead. And uh, I can't wait to see what the Emerald Fennell does next. Uh, I really love Promising Young Woman. I like this, so I'm on board. I can't wait to see her third film, whatever that may be. And our final film to close out 2010, 2010, our final film on my 2023 top 10 films is The Holdovers. This movie is great. This movie was looks so fucking good. It is a 70s movie set during Christmas. Really kind of a letdown and gloomy, but then it's upbeat and then it's kind of sad. But it has fantastic characters like uh, Divine is divine in this. Um, the main character, I believe, uh, was never an actor before the main boy. And he uh, did a really fucking good job here. And I mean, do I need to say anything about the lead actor? Paul Giamatti knocked it out. Uh, and, you know, I feel like, uh, honestly, it was really good. And uh, it it's not the type of movie I normally would like, but something about it I really dug. I think this just hit Peacock. I know a lot of people are now starting to talk about it. 
I guess somehow was lost in translation in the while well, it was in cinemas, but definitely worth checking out. And you don't got to watch it during Christmas, but or the holiday seasons, but it definitely helps. But uh, yeah, those are my top movies of uh, 2023. Uh, if you liked any of them, please uh, tell me which ones you liked in the comments. And uh, if you thought any of them sucked, let me know what you thought uh, made them so bad. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check those movies out if you've never seen them before. Thank you for watching. And uh, please definitely follow us at movie underscore toast on most social networks. Um, and check out our podcast, Movie Toast News and Reviews. I say we, my partner, Dennis, and I uh, host a movie review podcast bi-weekly. Uh, please check it out. Uh, available wherever you get podcasts. Thank you and stay toasty.